Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy. I call myself ETCG1 when I post videos on this channel, which is called ETCG1, and I hope that makes sense. But if it's your birthday, happy birthday, and welcome to the show. Have a cake. Today's topic is, is a question to the viewers, and I find, well, I learn a lot of stuff when I post videos like this. And today's topic is, I'm not putting a catalytic converter back on the truck. I don't have to, according to the laws in my state and my area, there isn't any emissions testing or anything like that. And it's also a 1990, so it's more than 25 years old, which kind of qualifies it as a classic. It's, it's actually, I think, from the end of production or whatever the heck it is. The, the actual definition of what makes a classic a classic has always been kind of fuzzy to me, and I think it's sort of up to interpretation for a lot of different things, or, or a lot of different areas, let's just say. And I'm curious as to how you feel about that. I mean, it is a performance application. Ugh. Yeah, this thing. Uh, that's a lot of weight. And if this actually has platinum and palladium in it, this is the old style catalytic converter with these plugs, and I think it's full of pellets that I can actually remove. I think so, but anyway. It is. Oh, you want to see in there? You can't really see much now, can you? Not a whole lot. Anyway, <laughs> hope that made for a good thumbnail, but <laughs> here's my thinking. Now, originally the vehicle had, originally the truck had a catalytic converter on it. So technically speaking, I should put one back on it. The same thing with the Ford. I didn't put a catalytic converter on that either. But here's my argument. These are not vehicles that are daily driven. It's something that's gonna be for car shows, that type of thing. Although I might drive the truck a little more because I'm giving my son my element, my youngest son my element. So I won't have that to use as a truck. Instead, I'll have an actual truck, which, okay. I'm also putting multi-port fuel injection on the truck and it originally had a throttle body injection system that was dating back to the late 80s. I mean, it was a 1990, but the technology was developed in the 80s, so it was, you know, not, the, not at the forefront of what fuel injection has to offer. Really, it was just a carburetor replacement and a lot of emission controls to try to bring emissions into line. I wonder, and I'm curious, and the, the real thing to have done would have been to do an emissions test before and after, although I'll tell you right now, the emissions test on this truck would have been completely junk. The exhaust was full of holes, including I broke with the O2 sensors. I was taking out some of the suspension parts on one side, so there was a giant exhaust leak where an O2 sensor used to be. You know, I didn't care, I was pulling the engine, but I'm curious as to how you feel about these things. I mean, if you are in an area where you do not have to uh, install a catalytic converter or emission systems, how do you feel about that? Do you, do you automatically not do it? or? Are you concerned about the environment? Because, okay, I know, I know this is gonna sound weird coming from a guy with two vehicles that are not necessarily emissions compliant, but there's a reason for those emission laws. And if you know anything about history and you know, smog and pollution and those types of things can be deadly, has been deadly in the past. That's why they started doing that stuff. And looks like I got a bird in here. <laughs> I'm gonna open the door, see if I can let him out. Yay! He's free! Where were we before the uh, Leonard Skinner interlude? I think we were talking about uh, my thoughts on not running a catalytic converter and emission system. So the truck, like I said, its emission system was designed in the 80s and it was better than a carburetor, but it was severely restrictive as far as horsepower was concerned. I mean, just the design of everything was made as such, more to conform for emissions than make power. What I'm doing is obviously making power in my camshaft will help ensure that, but I'm also adding multi-port fuel injection, which is an improvement over the throttle body injection that this thing originally had. And I'm not saying that the emissions are gonna be better because obviously they won't be as good. But once again, this is not something I'm driving all the time. I think I was also alluding to uh, that emissions laws are there for a reason. People died, people got sick. I mean, if, if you can't breathe, and or your eyes are burning or you get to watch your children have to suffer because of pollution and those kind of things. You can understand why those laws would be in place. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes they go a bit off the rails and get a bit too restrictive, but on the other side of that, like I said, the reasoning behind it. I, I try to see both sides of things. I'm, I try not, I, I believe the world is, it does not consist of absolutes. And, and I believe there's a lot of gray in a lot of places. So I, I try to do right where I can. 
And I guess I don't want to make this video too long. I just, like I said, I'm not running a catalytic converter on either of my performance vehicles, but they're not daily driven. And I do everything possible to keep them maintained and running as good as they possibly can. So therefore, my carbon footprint with these quote unquote hot rods, I'm hoping is not too large because you know I don't do a whole lot of driving I don't live far away from the shop and I pretty much go to the shop and I go home and edit videos that's that's what I do like six days a week and I'm fine with that I'm totally happy no complaints here that being said what do you think about not running catalytic converters or emission systems on your hot rods it's not like I see people doing them but what if one day they make us do that or if you live in an area where they make you do that type of thing how do you handle that I mean do you do you put a catalytic converter on the outside so it looks like you do <laughs> do you get all VW about it <laughs> do you just flat out lie I mean, I mean, even the manufacturers are having trouble keeping up with these new mandates, but I, I understand. I understand the reasoning behind it, and that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this now. Because I've said it before, the motor law may be coming. And if it does come, well, what do I do with my Fairmont and what do I do with my truck at that point? Do I hide? Do I? I don't, I don't know. Curious as to what you think, that's what comments are for. Please leave them down below. If you have automotive questions, air at thecarguy.com. I'll also put a link in the description to other videos, related information, that kind of thing. So check the description. There may be something cool there before you click onto something else, which hopefully is another ETCG1 video. Also, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe, as well as watching those videos. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to your comments. I'll see you next time.